Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar today for visualization and analysis of high parameter CITOF data with FCS Express in record time. Today's webinar is presented by the teams at Fluidime and DeNovo Software. My name is Sean Burke. I'm the Senior Product Manager at DeNovo Software. And I also have on the line Thiru from Fluidime, and we're going to be going through um, again, talking about some of the uh, mass cytometry technology today and uh, analyzing some of that data within FCS Express afterwards. So as a little bit of a background about uh, today's webinar, you know, one of the reasons that we're hosting today's webinar and we're jointly hosting today's webinar is because Fluidime and DeNovo Software have just recently announced a new distribution agreement to provide FCS Express flow cytometry with every new Helios and Hyperion system. And this is really gonna help researchers seamlessly move from acquisition on the uh, mass cytometry systems uh, to results in FCS Express. So again, this agreement brings together the powerful technology um, of mass cytometry and all the advanced data analysis tools in FCS Express. And really importantly, all Fluidime systems purchased after August 15th, 2020 are eligible to receive a free license or a free one-year license of FCS Express. And today's webinar is first going to focus on the Helios mass cytometer powered by CyTOF technology. And this system produces uh, you know, robust and high parameter data. And then we're gonna come in and talk about the intersection with the advanced analysis and reporting tools in FCS Express. So with that, I want to uh, flip the recording or flip the uh, presentation over to Thiru. Hi Thiru, welcome again to the meeting today. We're gonna make you the presenter here. Thanks, Sean. I'm on the call. Uh, can you hear me? I'm gonna check before. Yeah, we got you in. We we see your screen and we hear you. Great. We'll let you take it away from here. Great. Uh, I'm going to minimize that. Cool. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the call. My name is Thiru Solanzam. I'm a product manager at Fluidime from Suspension Mass Cytometry Products. And today I will be covering the top eight reasons for you to use mass cytometry on your project. I'm really excited to show you um, what. Helios can do for you and what reagent products that we have that will really support you in your work. Great. So the, while I'm going to cover eight reasons for using mass cytometry in your research, the three primary aims of this presentation are to provide detail on the ever-increasing use of CyTOF around the world and to provide reasons why CyTOF has become so popular for high-parameter cytometry and to clear up some misconceptions about the technology that people uh, might have. So as a preview, here are the top eight reasons to use CyTOF, and I'll cover in more detail in the presentation. So number one, uh, the first reason we will cover is that mass cytometry is a proven and well-adopted technology. Since the first CyTOF instrument was sold in 2008, over 900 pre-reviewed papers, and this isn't including reviews, have been published that feature significant use of mass cytometry or introduce new analysis methods applied to mass cytometry data. We are actually at a point where we're closing in on over uh, close to 1,000 peer-reviewed publications. A breakdown of these publications that feature mass cytometry and their areas of studies is shown on the left here. Much of the research comes from the fields of immuno-oncology, oncology, and basic immunology, but also extends to stem cell biology, neuroscience, infectious disease research, and data analysis approaches. The graph on the right shows the distribution of panel sizes used in these studies, and a third of mass cytometry published panels were in the teens to 30 range, and over half of these studies used panels of 31 markers or more. So overall, based on the breadth of literature available, mass cytometry has diverse applications uh, and great flexibility in the markers um, that can be used. I really do want to emphasize that customers are easily able to jump into mass cytometry with panel sizes of 30, 35, 40, um, just from the get-go. There is also a growing adoption of mass cytometry in clinical trials. As of July 2020, there were 87 ongoing trials citing mass cytometry as a readout, with the bulk of these trials using mass cytometry for phase one or phase two clinical research. 
17 trials using mass cytometries have concluded. Um, and so for we, at present, we have a total of 105 clinical trials that filed with mass cytometry as a readout. This information has all been sourced from clinicaltrials.gov. The second reason is that mass cytometry has performance equal to or better than fluorescent cytometry. I will highlight two key publications that support this. The first publication uh, discusses the use of mass cytometry as a potential readout in clinical research. Gadala et al. compared a single tube 40 marker mass cytometry panel side by side with a multi tube eight color full cytometry workflow on human PBMCs and dissociated tumor. Their key findings show a statistical congruence in the populations using both approaches. Both methods also showed comparable staining quality and signal intensities. The authors emphasize the ability of mass cytometry to identify phenotypic, functional, and exhaustion markers in a unified manner as an advantage over a multi-tube workflow. The authors also point out to mass cytometry superiority in the discovery of new biomarkers and forgetting the most information from limited and precious samples, such as tumor biopsies. The next publication is a review article from the Erie and Irish labs at Vanderbilt University. Mystery et al. reviewed the utility of various technologies to analyze solid tumors. Their observations led to the conclusions that mass cytometry serves as one of the most capable approaches, bridging the high parameter yield of single cell RNA-seq and the throughput cost effectiveness of full cytometry. The authors argue that mass cytometry is a method that has great utility in driving advances in the tumor biology field with unified proteomic analysis, as well as the capacity to identify rare cell types. In addition, the authors mentioned that Cytop technology can also be used to integrate spatial information in studies of a tumor microenvironment through the use of the Hyperion Imaging Mass Cytometry System. Um, and if you'd like more information on, uh, on the Hyperion Imaging Mass Cytometry System, feel free to reach out to me or to reach out to tech support at fluidime.com. Number three is the simplicity of CITOF. In this section, I will discuss how the Helios mass cytometer is a straightforward instrument for daily use. So the Helios mass cytometer uses the well-established technology of inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry while handling, while handling the sample preparation, sample introduction, and the data output in a manner similar to flow cytometry. Using this approach offers a variety of advantages. First, the Helios is a single detector system with a direct path from cell ionization to signal detection. Only one daily QC, called tuning, is needed for system calibration and optimization. There's no assay or metal-specific adjustments that are required, and there's no compensation or single stain controls that are needed. Second, there is no impact of autofluorescence on signal sensitivity. Mass cytometry has nothing analogous to autofluorescence since the metal isotopes that are used as tags do not occur naturally in biological systems. So from a workflow standpoint, mass cytometry is considerably less complex than any high-parameter flow cytometry approach. The fourth reason to use mass cytometry in your research is the easiest high-parameter panel building you will ever experience, and I can't emphasize this <laughs> uh, enough. In this slide, you'll see the emission spectra for violet laser dot excited dyes in a 20-color full cytometry panel. So what you'll see is that this illustrates that there is significant overlap between emission spectra of fluorescent tags. This overlap overall reduces uh, sensitivity in channels where it occurs. It requires multiple control tubes of samples. It makes it difficult to use over 20 fluorophores routinely or change your panel later. And it requires more iteration when building high parameter panels than mass cytometry. Fluorescent cytometry signals are also impacted by autofluorescence, even when the autofluorescence is subtracted, which leads to less sensitivity reduction and can make co expression difficult to parse out. So in addition, compensation and spectral mixing is affected by instrument configurations and settings, as well as the use of appropriate controls. In contrast, Helios has 135 truly distinct channels for signal detection, which makes building a high parameter panel quite easy as compared to full cytometry. And then assay specific optimization and compensation are needed are not needed in mass cytometry.
The fifth reason to incorporate mass cytometry into your research is that it provides the most capable high-parameter cytometer uh, available. Lower dimensional fluorescent cytometry of 15 or so parameters enables a broad range of applications. However, an evaluation of seven optimized multicolor immunophenotyping panels, or OMIPs, with 20 to 30 parameters shows that the predominant application is surface phenotyping, and in some cases, a few intracellular markers for phenotyping or function, such as cytokines or cell death and apoptosis, have been included. The exact technical reason for this is unclear. However, for mass cytometry, the range of proven applications is quite a bit broader. So, in addition to the range of markers established in the full cytometry OMIPS, mass cytometry has enough open channels to allow comb combination of broad phenotyping, along with other applications such as signaling, cell cycle, epigenetic markers, and tetramer studies. In fact, multiple publications utilizing mass cytometry with barcoded tetramers has enabled the investigation of hundreds of epitopes simultaneously. As shown in the image here from from Gonzalez et al. in cell reports, mass cytometry allowed assessment of not only surface phenotyping and functional molecules, but a large number of intracellular and intranuclear signaling molecules, all in a single tube of digested ovarian tumor samples. There is an extensive bibliography of papers using mass cytometry for similar analysis. Um, and if you're interested, please reach out to, to me or to Fluidime, and uh, we can send you the current trending reports and publications uh, using mass cytometry. So the very limited number of publications using high parameter full cytometry incorporating signaling, cell cycle, or histone staining show that it is much more challenging to perform these studies of functional analysis by fluorescence, probably due to the increase in autofluorescence cells undergo during the harsh staining conditions required, or perhaps certain fluoroforms, or perhaps certain fluoroforms are sensitive to such fixation. One of the major strengths of metal labeled antibodies and other metal tags is that they are robust. Uh, unlike fluorochromes, metal tags are resistant to harsh staining conditions such as methanol permeabilization. They do not photo bleach or fall apart or interfere with each other. And labeled cells can also be frozen and stored at negative 80 Celsius with little to no impact on staining quality. Fluidime also offers 42 metals available in kits to easily label antibodies of your choice. So you have the flexibility of labeling any of any antibody that you may not find in the Fluidime catalog using our conjugation kits. Um, and finally, barcoding. Mass cytometry is the only high parameter uh, cytometry platform which enables barcoding. So Fluidime has actually has two barcoding products. The first uh, is the Palladium Barcoding Kit, which allows staining of up to 20 samples, each with a unique three-digit Palladium code. Barcoded samples are then combined and stained, processed, and acquired all in a single tube. And the single barcoded FCS file is then debarcoded with a debarcoder in Cytos software to create single FCS files for each original sample. Um, barcoding is a unique and highly valuable application that eliminates tube-to-tube -tube variability when staining, it reduces reagent use, it saves time during sample preparation and acquisition, and it enables better single cell discrimination. Um, and I want to take a quick opportunity here to also show that um, Fluidime also recently came out with um, an antibody-based barcoding, I'm oh, sorry, uh, antibodies that customers can then use to create their own life cell barcoding uh, schemes where CD45 on cadmium isotopes have been released and um, customers can then use these cadmium antibodies to create their own barcoding scheme and add to their existing panels. So now that we have covered mass cytometry applications, let's discuss the excellent array of reagents and antibody options available. Reagents are one of Fluidime's tools for streamlined standardized analysis. First, Fluidime sells a total of 22 panel kits, many of which are designed to be combined together to create larger panels. The range of applications covered by these panels is shown in the table on the right and creates general immunophenotyping, more targeted phenotyping, 
of certain cell types such as T and T cells, B cells, or myeloid cells, as well as functional panels for cytokine signaling pathways and cell cycle analysis. There are also panels devoted to checkpoint markers as well as in-depth immune monitoring. The Foodime offers a large catalog containing more than 750 pre-conjugated antibodies, as well as labeling kits with a choice of 42 metal isotopes to conjugate your own antibodies of interest. Our custom conjugation service also allows our in-house experts to label antibodies for you if you prefer. And lastly, Fluidime field application scientists are ready to aid in designing or modifying your mass cytometry panel. We have discussed uh, performance applications and tools. Now let's discuss reason number seven, mass cytometry's unrivaled data quality. Profiling the human immune system is a key application used in translational and clinical research to look for biomarkers of disease or response to therapy. It is essential in driving the search for more effective treatments for almost any disease, cancer, autoimmune diseases, or infectious disease. So Fudan created the MaxPAR Direct Immune Profiling System, which was named the best new cell biology product of 2019 by the Life Sciences Industry Awards. The MaxPAR Direct Immune Profiling System is a truly revolutionary approach to immune monitoring and is absolutely unique in the cytometry market. The system consists of an assay kit with a dry 30 antibody marker panel in a single tube plus reagents you needed to process either human PBMC or whole blood samples a custom template to collect the samples on a Helios mass cytometer, and an automated analysis software solution, um, which includes MaxPAR Direct. So peer-reviewed publication in Cytometry B detailed multi-site reproducibility of the MaxPAR Direct immune profiling assay coupled with catheter software. Um, replicate samples of PBMC and whole blood uh, from single donors were stained and acquired at six or seven sites. And key findings in the paper showed a high degree of reproducibility for the cell population frequencies identified in PBMC and whole blood. So this was found for both intracyte and intracyte results. So these studies affirm that MaxPAR direct immune profiling assay is a convenient and reliable solution for deep immune profiling at any institution or across multiple sites. Um, and so number eight. Um, before I hand it back to Sean, is that we are a community. If you're new to mass cytometry, you are not alone. Mass cytometry has a very supportive global community, um, both of users and resources. Publications are available through the Fluidime bibliography, um, and there are also many data analysis resources uh, available to you. Fluidime has a team of expert field application scientists ready to provide direct support um, and additional support and interaction with the Cytos community is available at regional user group meetings and annual mass cytometry events. So I'm going to go back to the slide and really emphasize that the, that the data collected from a um, six-site uh, study using our MaxPAR Direct Kit and really emphasizes the data quality here. And this is the data that Sean is going to use today to show you uh, the manual uh, analysis of, uh, of using the MaxPAR direct immune profiling assay. Um, so, and this is a good opportunity for uh, to show uh, how FCS Express is used to uh, analyze mass cytometry data. I'm going to hand the presentation back to you, Sean, um, or I can take a couple minutes to see if there's any questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Thiru, for uh, going through that that first part of the the webinar describing the technology. Um, you know, as Thiru mentioned, there's um, a, a lot of you know really nice intersections, especially with these uh, Max Par kits um, for for working with FCS Express, and that's kind of where we're going to go into the webinar now is talking about FCS Express, um, talking about the tools that we have in the software to help support your mass cytometry data analysis, um, and importantly, focusing on how to get results from that data and how to get them very quickly and efficiently. Um, again, if you have any questions, make sure to uh, type them in the questions and answers box. I know I've seen a, a few come through so far. We're going to swing back around at the end of the webinar and, and, and pick up on some of those questions. Uh, but we're going to go through first as a, a little bit of introduction about FCS Express, and then we're going to go through and look at some data live in the software um, so you can get a feel for how all of this works. 
So let me just make sure that you guys can see my screen here. And again, just to kind of recap from the beginning, um, really what we're going to be doing as part of this uh, kind of distribution agreement is anybody who's purchased a fluid eye instrument since August 15th this year, 2020, um, you're going to be getting a free copy of FCS Express for one year uh, without charge. Um, so you know, you'll have that license available, you'll have it accessible, you can always grab a demo version of FCS Express from our website if you, um, you know, don't fall within that criteria, you can always purchase, you know, additional licenses from our website. But you might be wondering, all right, why De Novo Software? Why FCS Express? Why did Fluidium and De Novo Software get together? Well, really, the, the reasons here is that De Novo Software has been in business for over 20 years, right? We have a lot of experience, in, experience developing uh, flow cytometry data analysis solutions. Uh, we have folks placed all over the world for support and applications. So really, you're going to be getting this unrivaled support, right? If you write us a question at one in the morning in uh, New York time, one of our folks over in Italy or somewhere else in Europe will be answering your call um, very, very quickly or answering your email. Uh, generally, we get back to you within an hour or two, but never more than 24 hours. And we do have thousands of customers representing all fields of research, academic, biopharma, clinical, CROs, um, all of these types of um, different places where you can be doing mass cytometry analysis are already using FCS Express to a large degree. Now, really importantly, what I'm going to focus on today is that FCS Express is this fully integrated tool for getting statistics, graphs, reports. You, know, you don't have to move between Excel and Prism and Photoshop and Illustrator to get a final result. Really, um, when you leave FCS Express, what you have is the result that you need for your lab meeting, your presentation, your poster, your publication. We also have full support for all the Fluidim instruments um, and data that comes off of these. So when you pull your data into FCS Express, it's going to look like what it came, what it looked like at the time of acquisition. And we know that's very important that you're not trying to fight with kind of data scaling and getting your plots to look similar to what they did in the in the Fluidim software. It's just going to be done for you. Now, if you've never used FCS Express before, you might be worried. You might be thinking, well, this is a new software. You know, I've been using so-and-so for, for many years. But the really nice thing is that Microsoft uh, FCS Express works just like Microsoft Office in many ways. And I'm pretty sure that everybody on this webinar has probably done a PowerPoint presentation, has probably used Excel. And if you've done any of those things in the past, the learning curve for FCS Express is very low. And you're going to see that when we open up the software. It looks and feels and acts like Microsoft Office. And we also have these integrated spreadsheets, direct high resolution exports. And again, you don't have to use these multiple tools for analysis. So to kind of recap that, right? Think about what you might be doing in other software. You're taking your uh, data from the instrument, you're generating basic plots, basic statistics, you know, tables and things like that. And I know a lot of people spend time copying and pasting the prism, copying and pasting to Excel, uh, working up R scripts, you know, working on Photoshop, uh, to even just put a little white text box over an access label to change what's on the label. Um, all of that before you even get to a result. We think that's a big waste of time when you're doing your analysis. Because in FCS Express, tools that you'd be using are um, things like Tisney, Spade, bar plots, p-values, regression analysis, standard deviations, um, all of that type of stuff that you might be doing downstream is all in FCS Express. And what you're going to see is that not only is it in the software, but it links up to your gates. Imagine moving a gate and your analysis in Excel updates in real time. And that's essentially what you're going to be getting in FCS Express. So there's a lot of key features for Fluidime customers. And again, that's part of a, a big reason why um, you know, this agreement came into a place. But up here is just a little example of those integrated spreadsheets. We're going to see that in some real data in just a minute. Um, but again, as you move a gate, spreadsheets update, you know, statistics, calculated values, uh, bar plots, they update. Uh, the presentation and publication ready graphics are really important, right? If a publisher comes back and they say they need a, a figure at 400 DPI, 
you can set your settings in FCS Express for 400 DPI, you can export that image, and then you're off and running with your publication, right? I know in other software packages, it can be very difficult to do those sorts of things. We're gonna see the Microsoft-like interface in, in just a moment here, but really importantly is the high dimensional data reduction tools in the software as well. We know performing things like Tisney and Spade and reducing this really highly multi-parametric data uh, into some sort of plot and display that's very easy to distill uh, is important, especially when you're working with, with uh, CyTOF data. So what we're gonna do is actually take a look at this uh, in FCS Express. We're gonna look at some of these specialized tools that are up here, um, and then we're gonna come back and, and kind of recap. So let me close out PowerPoint here, or I'll kind of move it out of the way. And where I'm gonna start is this MaxPar direct uh, analysis template in FCS Express, because uh, I know Thiru had brought that up, and it's a really kind of great starting place to start talking about the software. So you can see that I've uh, brought up FCS Express here, and you may be thinking, well, this looks just like my Microsoft PowerPoint. And that's actually shamelessly like by design, right? We know that folks have gone into PowerPoint, they've inserted text boxes and shapes and pictures. Um, we can do all that at FCS Express as well, but when it comes to inserting things like density plots, box and whisker plots, contour plots, ways to work with and visualize your data, it works much the same way. Right, so if you're looking for something and how to do it, think about what you would do in Microsoft Office, right? And you're probably going to arrive at the same sort of conclusion in FCS Express. Now, what we have up here is this MaxPAR Direct Immune Profiling Assay template. You can grab this from the DeNovo software website. You can grab it from the Fluidime website. You, know, you can create your own from scratch at some point if you want. But the way that this works is you go and you find you know whatever data you want to analyze that day. Um, in this case, I have 16 data files, and I can drag them and drop them into what we call the data list in FCS Express. So what FCS Express is going to do, and you can see it happen quite quickly. Like these, these are not small data files. These are big data files with lots of parameters, lots of events. It loaded this up into FCS Express on this first page where we're doing our cleanup gates. Um, we actually have two sets of eight here. I wanted to show some comparisons with p-values and things like that. So I did actually load quite a bit of data here. But the way that the data list works is if we click on either a different data file or a different group of data files, everything on these plots is going to update. And not just on these plots, what you'll see and what you'll notice is that kind of like Microsoft Excel where I have multiple page tabs, I have multiple page tabs, each one devoted to some sort of part of my analysis, B cell subsets, neutrophils, monocytes, NK cells, right? And I have this kind of done across many, many pages. So that way I can focus on, you know, what results are important for you know, which subsets I happen to be looking at. And I can quickly move between all of these and we can even use tools like our multiple page tabs. Um, so if we wanted to kind of look at, you know, neutrophils versus you know, CD8 alpha beta cells for, for whatever reason, we can visualize this in a lot of different ways. Now, I did kind of mention the speed, right? We loaded this data up really, really quickly, um, but the speed isn't just on data loading. What you're gonna find is that as we make changes to gates in the software, you can see that all of my downstream plots are updating in real time, right? So even though I'm making this change for this top level gate on the cleanup page, um, all of my other gates on that cleanup page are updating in real time. And you're gonna notice that it's kind of common theme when we use FCS Express, statistics, gates, all the charts that you're working are going to be updating for you. Now. When we talk about and we focus on getting results, right? A result, again, is not just a particular plot. It's not just a um, table of statistics, right? An end result is something like a bar chart that shows you p-values based off of standard deviations. A result is something like a box and whisker plot that shows you the differences between different populations. Now we do this in FCS Express. We have these plot types in here in the insert tab. You can see here we have bar plots, uh, box and whisker plots, scatter the regression plots. And the really beautiful thing is that as I update this gate, 
you're going to see that things like p-values on this eosinophil and neutrophil bar bar chart are updating, right? Things like box and whiskers on that box and whisker plot are updating in real time, right? So that's gonna save you a lot of time. I know as a, a grad student many years ago, I would show you know my PI some sort of result. It was based off of data that we had to export to Prism and to Excel and transform the data and do all these crazy things. And they would say, move the gate just a pixel. And then you have to go back and re-export all that data and do it again, right? And in FCS Express, we make this very simple. You can move the gate, you can see what those end results are doing. It doesn't mean you should use this for p-value hacking and to make your standard deviations very small. You could do that at any software, but in terms of efficiency of getting results, nothing really beats this. You're getting that end result uh, directly integrated here into uh, that chart. And of course, it doesn't just have to work with, you know, kind of smaller sets of data. Um, you can see here that we have a bar plot integrated with multiple p-values. We have it integrated with multiple subsets of this analysis. And in this case, we're just looking at some of the B-cell subsets. So again, as we move that gate, all of that information updates immediately. Now you might be wondering, all right, well, you're moving the gate and you're showing the bar plot, but you're not showing how we got that information to the bar plot. Maybe that's really difficult to do, but it's not. I'm gonna jump to another page here. We're gonna take a look at how this is set up. And in the beginning, I mentioned, if you've used Microsoft Office, if you've used Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint, you know how to do this stuff already, right? This is a spreadsheet. We call these integrated spreadsheets in FCS Express. And the way that we get to these is we insert a new spreadsheet. A spreadsheet will be created on the page. And again, they work like Excel. If I type in a value in a cell, if I type in another value, and if I equals, um, you know, one cell divided by another equals something, you arrive at a result, right? And as you change a value, that result updates just like Excel does. Um, and of course, we have all of the kind of functionality that Excel has, conditional formatting, sorting, formulas, you know, you could do your taxes here if you really wanted to. But better yet, we don't wanna have you having to type in information into these spreadsheets, right? Um, you know, the MaxBar Direct templates that we have really have a lot of this stuff kind of filled out for you. But when it comes to working with data in the software, if you wanna insert something like a density plot, you simply draw a density plot on the page. Uh, FCS Express is gonna prompt you with a plot and you're gonna pick and choose which parameters you wanna show. Now you're used to working with this highly dimensional data, right? But if you just start typing in the search bar the parameter you're interested in, you know, CD8, CD4, FCS Express is gonna jump you to the correct parameter of interest and you're gonna get off and running with that analysis. So as we come in and you know we wanna create some sort of gate on this data, we'll create a CD4 gate. FCS Express is gonna prompt me to give that a gate name and a gate color. And again, why I'm doing this is to show you just how simple it is, not just to kind of create a, uh, a plot and a report, but if we wanna get that data into the spreadsheet, there's drag and drop. If I drag and drop the CD4 gate into the spreadsheet, FCS Express says, what statistic do you want? I'm gonna put in the number of events. If I drag and drop the CD8 to that spreadsheet, FCS Express says, what statistic do you want? I'll choose number of events. So now I have the number of events. If I wanna do some sort of you know, ratio metric calculation, I can do that. But because these were dragged and dropped, because they're derived from the plot, again, as we move these gates, information in that spreadsheet updates, information, um, you know, like these B-cells bar plots, whatever might be downstream of that bar chart is going to update for us in real time. So again, it's a really kind of important functionality um, for working with your data and for making things much easier. Now, when it comes to getting information out, right, I know we have lots of pages uh, kind of associated with this analysis. Uh, we have lots of information that's here. There's very quick and easy ways to export that information. Um, one way is you can simply just choose an export here. <clears throat> so from our export tab, if you just wanna say export to say PowerPoint, I'm gonna create an export. And FCS Express is going to simply export all the information from all of these pages directly out to PowerPoint. 
So it's going through the process of that now. Um, if we wanted to get all the information out to Excel, we know that the spreadsheets aren't the be all end all. We can do that with a click. Uh, we have this whole batch processing tab up here. So if you need to kind of quickly and efficiently work through 10, 100, 1000 data files, you can quickly batch all that information out to PowerPoint, to PDF, to Excel documents. And what will happen is when that export is done, and again, we're exporting a, a lot of information here across 18 pages um, because we can consolidate all that information from the, the dry tube analysis pretty easily, PowerPoint launches up and you can see that we have all of that information exported to PowerPoint. And if I know that, you know, I need to come in here and look at my B cells chart and this is part of what I need for my PowerPoint presentation to show my lab. Well, I have that, it's super high resolution, it's in PowerPoint already, I can bring it to the front and we're off and running with some sort of result, some sort of final product um, that you can present, that you can bring to publication, um, whatever it is you need to do. The other kind of unique trick is the way that we export these. You can see that they're not just uh, one big PowerPoint object, they're all individual objects. And as such, you can actually group and ungroup these things in PowerPoint. So if I didn't like 168 ER on the axis and I just wanted CD14, well, because of the way that we export things in FCS Express, you can make that change directly in PowerPoint, right? You don't have to fight with Illustrator or Photoshop. If I just want the distribution of the data, I can grab that and I can put it into a poster. I can put it into a presentation. These things make, uh, you know, getting, again, that result very quick and easy. But, you know, you can do all this in FCS Express as well. It doesn't mean that you just have to use PowerPoint to make edits to charts and plots and things like that. Um, you know, we have this live updating formatting interface in the software. So if I right click on any plot and I choose format, I can actually change anything about that plot that I want. If I don't wanna show the title, I can remove the title. Um, you know, I mentioned the, the axis labeling and the axis label handling. If I wanted to use, you know, something custom or I didn't wanna use say, you know, CD4, uh, 145 ND, I can put in, you know, whatever kind of text I want, right? Now that plot is going to use whatever text I happen to enter there, or if I have some predefined text that I want to enter in there, um, all of this type of formatting stuff can be done directly in FCS Express even before you get it anywhere else, right? So again, that makes the analysis uh, pretty darn quick and easy for doing this stuff. Now, another thing that comes up when we're analyzing uh, any sort of CITOF data is the ability to work with high dimensional data reduction, right? So that's another type of result that you might be after, you know, outside of these kind of beautiful bar plots, the beautiful box and whisker plots, you might want to perform TISNI. Um, now, the way that we handle that in FCS Express is in our tools tab, we have something called transformations. So if I open this up, um, what you're going to see is a little dialog pops up. In this case, it has a, a TISNI that I've already kind of started working with for this data file. Um, but if I wanted to add a new TISNI, a new spade, a new clustering, a new R integration, principal component analysis, uh, and there's more of these coming, by the way, um, I click on the transformation, it adds a transformation to uh, the data set that I can work with, and that's essentially how we ended up putting this little TISNI transformation in here. Now, it's very simple to work with this. It's, it's not anything kind of esoteric that you have to read a manual about. Of course, if you want to perform TISNI, you should learn a little bit about uh, what the algorithms actually do. But at a high level, we choose some sort of gate. You don't have to use a gate if you don't want to, but a you know, applying some sort of live cells gate or the cleanup gate is a great way to kind of downsample your data. And then we come in and we pick and choose which parameters we want to uh, participate in this data reduction, right? Maybe I wanna do some additional clustering on CD3, additional clustering on CD20. And you can see that we're automatically gonna scale that to arcsine H uh, as you'd be expecting for working with CITOF data. And of course, there's other options, there's other variables that are in here. Uh, I've pretty much just left all of these at the defaults for FCS Express. We could have a whole webinar or discussion about what these variables do and what they mean. Uh, the one thing that we do have here is this estimate TISNI for unsampled events. It's kind of a unique feature in FCS Express uh, where, where we can actually not just take the downsample data, but we can upsample it back to the rest of the information.
Now, Tisney in FCS Express is very fast. Um, I get this Tisney to calculate by dragging it and dropping it onto this plot. Now, when the plot says Tisney transformed in the title, that means that the Tisney transformation is complete, right? And you can see it says Tisney mapped, the Tisney transformation is complete. So what I can do is down at the bottom of my list, I'm gonna have a Tisney X and Tisney Y. And of course, if I don't wanna scroll through that list, I can do my quick search. And here's my Tisney transformation, right? And we can get rid of this transformation window now because I don't really need it. And just like that, we've arrived um, at a Tisney plot. Now, what this Tisney plot means right now by default is just counts. We're just showing the heat of counts, but we know that um, when you're working with this data, you're going to want to start looking at you know, different parameters of interest. So we have this kind of handy dandy interactive legend. If you click on CD19, CE4, you know, whatever parameters you want to investigate, we're going to change the Tisney plot to that parameter of interest. But we do know, again, you're working with lots of parameters and you know, just manually clicking on these things and copying and placing plots is, is gonna be a big waste of time. So when you have a plot selected, we can work with multiple plots. We can create histograms. Uh, we can plot all parameters by X, all parameters by Y. Um, we can work with N by N plot combinations. And importantly for Tisney, we can say color by all parameters. Now what this means is that if I come in and I wanna look at the heat of CD19, 4, 8, 16, you know, let's look at our ROs and RAs. Uh, I think we had CD3 and CD20 in there. Let's look at DR, right? We can pick and choose what we wanna display on those Tisney plots. And SES Express is gonna create a new group of plots it's going to show the heat based off of all those particular parameters. And the only thing I probably wanna do here is just show a little legend underneath with our interactive formatting. And when I do so, it's gonna put a legend. And now we're looking at these Tisney plots across all of the different markers of interest uh, for everything that I've calculated here. So again, arriving at you know this sort of display, this sort of breakdown and distilling your high dimensional data, it's very quick and easy in FCS Express and it works very, very fast. And the one other type of plot I do wanna um, talk about before we wrap up and take a few questions is I know a lot of folks like to work with array style plots. Uh, we can do this with what we call gates heat maps or parameter heat maps. And the way that these work is you just insert uh, kind of a row for a, a plot of data. And what FCS Express is going to do is plot for a gates heat map, um, what all of your gates look like for a particular parameter of interest. Or we could say insert a parameters heat map and look at all of your parameters across different data files. And in this case, we just have one data file loaded here um, into this parameter heat map. But if we wanna make it, you know, kind of more of a, um, uh, a display to show multiple data files, I can just grab multiple data files uh, from the data list and we add them to this gate heat map as a new overlay. And what FCS Express is gonna do, it's gonna kind of reload this data uh, back into the layout. It's going to populate this gate heat map. It's going to update this array style display. And it's gonna do that across all of the particular gates that we have in this analysis. And in this case, it's a lot of gates. So it's just taking a moment here to, to kind of recalculate. But when it recalculates, it's going to show us on the Y, um, all of the different uh, particular data files that we asked to overlay on this. It's gonna show us the heat of CD4 across all of these things. And you can say, see that we arrive at this array style map. And of course, with formatting, you know, you can make this array style map look like whatever it is you want. We know that, you know, you might not always want this kind of deep red color scaling. So you can change the formatting of that. Maybe you even want to use something like a grayscale, right? Maybe you even want to use um, something like some sort of red gradient, right? So working with these array style maps for performing comparisons between data files and gates and subsets, it's very easy, right? Either whether you're using Tisney or using these maps, uh, it doesn't really matter. We, we get you to that result very quickly and easily. So with that, you know, we've talked about um, a lot of uh, what we do in FCS Express about how we're designed to get you these results quickly and efficiently. 
Uh, and that's a really important thing when you're working with this highly multi-parametric data. We've streamlined the analysis to reporting. You can use these templates that we provide on our website. You can create your own, just like creating a PowerPoint presentation um, with the integrated spreadsheets and the built-in formatting. You can really arrive at a publication quality graphic really quick and easy. And really importantly, you didn't see me copy and paste at one point in that particular presentation, that live demo in the software. Um, um, copying and pasting can reduce, you know, reducing copy and paste can also reduce a lot of clerical errors in your analysis. And for folks that are new to FCS Express, the Microsoft Office like interface makes it super easy to use and learn. Um, if you are having difficulty, we have extensive online tutorials. We have other recorded webinars for kind of going into how to do this, that, and the other thing in more depth. And importantly, I always recommend try and reach out to us at support at denovosoftware.com. Uh, we have a really dedicated and knowledgeable support team. We'll always get back to you within 24 hours, more like an hour or two. Find yourself fighting in the software for some reason, you know, you're new to it. Don't worry, just send us a note. We'll get back to you. We'll help you get up and running the software. And importantly, we'll often be able to hop on a, a screen sharing meeting. We'll, we'll be able to work with your data hand in hand. The other thing about licensing is we know that a lot of uh, you know Helios and Hyperion systems end up in core facility settings as a shared resource. You know the the free license that comes with it uh, with that system is going to allow you to add multiple. Uh, users, one user at a time, but if you need to kind of expand that to uh, make FCS Express more accessible for your core facility or for all the users of the instrument, it's very easy. You can just reach out to our support team and we'll help you get the licenses and the number of seats uh, and users that you need. So with that, you know, we want to say uh, thanks to everybody for joining us on the webinar today. Um, you can contact Fluidime or DeNovo Software after a webinar with any questions. We are going to uh, pause here and we're going to take some questions in uh, just a few minutes. But I really wanted to say thank you to the team at Fluidime for uh, making this possible to put together this webinar today. Uh, it's been a very positive experience working with their team and working with uh, the SciTOF data sets in general and uh, working with their customers. You know, we've had a lot of customers reach out already. Um, asking us about how to work with FCS Express with this data. And it's been a very positive experience all around. So again, Theo, many thanks for um, your section of the presentation and for Fluidime for doing that as well. Oh, no, I have to say working with Genova has been very easy. And I can't emphasize enough how, how that streamlined export of to PowerPoint Excel is we will provide so much time savings. I know in grad school, I spent a, a certain amount of time Make updating figures or correcting titles that would just been made easier had I used FCS Express. So this has been a really positive experience on our end too. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, again, thanks everybody for joining us here. And we're going to uh, pause the recording. We're going to take some questions. So again, thanks for joining us. We hope you can uh, hang around for the questions and answers portions here.